to all the members, I welcome you all to the monthly presentation or the monthly meeting uh, for uh, February uh, 2022. In today's, today's agenda, um, we have uh, our activity update, the interest group update, monthly presentation, and then we'll have an open forum. For the activities update, um, the first I thing I wanted to uh, remind is that the PSSL life membership uh, is uh, open uh, under three categories. Uh, life member category one is for any ordinary member who is in good standing for 10 years and is not in arrears of the annual subscription for the relevant year in question. Uh, life member category two, uh, any ordinary member come executive committee member who has served in the executive committee for a total of five terms and is in good standing and is not in arrears of annual subscription for the relevant year in question. Life member category three, any ordinary member come executive committee member who is in good standing for five years, served in the executive committee for three terms with one year in the post of president and is not in arrears of annual subscription for the relevant year in question. So if you are falling into any of these categories, uh, the life uh, membership is open to you. Uh, the membership fee is uh, 15,000. For more information, you can always reach out to um, Ruvini uh, or our PSSL office. Um, Today, we have a very special update for PSSL 65th International Competition and Exhibition of Photography. Uh, award ceremony was held uh, a couple of days back um, last uh, Sunday. And uh, we wanted to uh, share some of the images that we took. Now, these images are not from our official photographer for the day. Uh, those images are to uh, be available in the coming few days. So. Just to, uh, for those who did not uh, attend this uh, ceremony, just wanted to uh, show you guys uh, some of the mobile captures that we took from that event. Um, and uh, I would also like to congratulate all the winners uh, and uh, thank all the participants uh, who took part in this particular competition. Capture this uh, monthly photography competition uh, 2022 uh, is open. So this is currently ongoing. Uh, anybody who's interested in improving their photography, receiving feedback, um, you're welcome to take part in this. Uh, we have monthly open judging sessions uh, for the images that you submit for that respective month. Uh, we have uh, five categories uh, or sections in uh, this competition. Assignment, open color, open mono, uh, wildlife and nature, and travel. Uh, so the current theme uh, for the month of March, uh, judging, uh, is light trails. And the deadline is the midnight of 28th February, 2022. So if you want more information on this uh, competition, please visit our website, uh, pssl.lk. Open judging session for uh, the entries for the February, the, uh, the competition that ended uh, on the midnight of uh, 31st of January. Uh, the judging will be on the 22nd of February, 6.30 PM via Zoom. So I invite you all to join and take part in that as well. Uh, PSSL YouTube channel uh, is an area where we are trying to get more people who are missing out on the live meetings to join in and um, uh, listen to the content and take part in that and uh, find uh, more inspiration and knowledge about photography and our society in general. So if you have not subscribed yet, please do subscribe and uh, press the bell icon uh, for notifications. Uh, PSSL blog um, is a space for you to come and share your uh, ideas, thoughts, and uh, 
knowledge, share your knowledge about photography uh, in the form of an article associated with perhaps um, photographic content or video content. So uh, you're welcome to take part in it. Uh, if you're interested in reading or consuming the content, visit pssl.hk forward slash blog. Um, if you want to contribute to the blog, uh, please uh, reach out to uh, blog at pssl.lk uh, with the content that you want to get published. Uh, image gallery of the PSSL is live. Uh, so if you are interested in uh, showcasing your images in one location in the form of albums uh, in a gallery, uh, this could be something that you would be interested in. So visit gallery.pssl.lk. Uh, and if you're interested in uh, becoming, uh, getting membership or subscription to this uh, gallery, uh, reach out to uh, Ruini and uh, she will be able to help you with the details. Um, the membership uh, fee for the registration fee is uh, only 500 rupees even now. We'll uh, go through an update of the interest groups. Um, first is uh, PSSL uh, Street and Travel Group. Um, PSSL uh, Street and Travel Group had an excursion to Negombo uh, on the 22nd of January. And uh, they uh, visited uh, the fishing uh, village nearby and they went to this uh, fish market area as well. And uh, this uh, about uh, 10, 12 people took part in this excursion. Um, it was very interesting. I also <laughs> took part in it. Uh, and we captured some great images from this session and uh, hopefully in the uh, next uh, group updates, we would be able to share those images as well. Uh, for the PSSL Street and Travel Group, uh, we had one uh, presentation conducted by Anuradha Bandara, Expect the Unexpected, uh, a very unique perspective uh, on uh, travel photography. Uh, and uh, something very interesting that he presented was his uh, 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 interest in uh, square format in uh, his uh, photography as well. Uh, travel group monthly meeting for February. Uh, members presentation will be conducted by Lakshan Seneviratna uh, live in IDP camps. This, this is scheduled uh, on 23rd of February, 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, Lakshan also has a very interesting collection of images that he would like to share with uh, the membership. So this is open to all members. You're welcome to come and join this. PSSL Wildlife and Nature Group uh, has uh, organized uh, a, uh, an excursion to Anavilu Dava Bird Sanctuary. Uh, this is uh, scheduled to be on 20th February, uh, starting from 6 a.m. So if you are interested in uh, joining this, um, please reach out to Ruini uh, to uh, reserve a slot for you. Uh, PSSL Portrait and Glamour Group, uh, after the relaunch, this is the first event that uh, this group organized, uh, Candlelight Portraiture. Uh, the session was conducted by Gayan uh, with the participation of uh, closely about 15 members uh, from the uh, Portrait and Glamour Group, as well as non-members who wanted to come and experience this. Um, this was uh, open to all members and uh, it was through registration only due to the limited capacity and uh, the group captured very interesting uh, images during this session and learned, uh, uh, learned some lessons about controlling light, using continuous lights and uh, how do you uh, mix up multiple light sources. Uh, with that, um, I will uh, start our flow for the monthly members meeting presentation. Uh, 
for the month of February. Now, uh, uh, today's session uh, is titled Art Beyond Gender. Uh, presentation will be conducted by Ramesh De Silva and uh, uh, me. So uh, in addition to that, we have a, a guest attending today's meeting, um, the model who took part in this uh, photo shoot with us, uh, Vasi Samudra Devi. Um, uh, there's something very special about her. Uh, the, there are a lot of aspects of her that are very interesting uh, and uh, inspiring that led to this photo shoot. So uh, we wanted her to uh, bring those thoughts and ideas to the forum and uh, open up for questions as well. Let me stop the sharing and open up the other presentation. Uh, Ramesh, uh, before we get started, uh, would you like to add a few thoughts about the, the concept behind the shoot uh, that happened on that day? Yeah, thanks, uh, Sandeep. And hi, Vasi, how are you doing? Uh, doing good. I uh, am sort of relaxed now. I kind of spend the day painting and drawing stuff, so like some commissions. So I'm um, pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. Painting and drawing. Yes, you did mention that you do painting and drawing. So what have you yeah. been painting? Um, finished uh, some paleo artworks. Just finished like a painting. It has been like just lying on my bed now. Usual. I'm working on like some other commissions for some friends' houses, that sort of thing. Uh -huh. Okay, great, great, yeah. So, okay, uh, so it was a bit out of the norm, huh? uh, our photo shoot, like, you know, it was not the standard sort of, uh, how would I say, um, the feel that we got a uh, little out of uh, um, the, the normal. Uh, so could you sort of start off the discussion by saying, okay, what, what do you represent? Who are you? Um, who am I is I kind of I'm a little cha I'm a little chaotic as a person and very disorganized and disorderly. So I guess as a person I kind of represent just being weird and owning it and just you know the doing things that are out of left field and enjoying being out of left field as well. So that's kind of like my thing. Being weird. Yeah, being weird and being out of left field, like being not what you expect. Okay, so uh, how would you sort of uh, uh, say express uh, yourself? I mean, uh, as a person, uh, in 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 the society uh, amongst people, um, how would you interact? I mean, do you feel that uh, it's sort of a equitable acceptance, or do you think that there are things that the society has to sort of improve uh, as far as uh, inclusion is concerned, uh, acceptance yeah. stuff like that? What do you feel? I mean, I've I've heard a lot of things that you say on Instagram, which are very powerful, like very sort of, uh, you know, forceful uh, feelings. So could you share something like that with us? Um, to be honest, it is pretty much the latter in that in terms of inclusion and acceptance, it's like there's a long, long way to go. I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. There's a lot that needs to be done in terms of, you know, achieving any kind of meaningful liberation for the community, communities, whatever conglomerate, whatever you wanna call it. But yeah, it is, it's a long way and I don't think we managed to like scratch the surface in this country or even on like a global scale, it's very, it's been very slow. Like Sri Lanka is a place where you have to expect, you know, very glacial progress with anything, any like social issues because it feels like we always take 10 to 20 steps back when we take one or two steps forward with anything in this country. So it's very... It's also very really painful saying that. It's also very really painful even interacting with people who've been through like arguably like you know you know far worse than I have because there are people who do go through and have been through much worse than I have. Uh, so I've been fortunate and privileged in so many ways uh, to be able to be as open as I am, and that kind of came from like not only myself but also things that I gained from sources that place that I couldn't control but worked in my favor. Mm -hmm. 
So do you think that gender is a way of expressing my, uh, oneself? Is it just like outward thing or is it something more? Uh, this is very stark difference between gender identity and expression. So ident the identity is how you feel from inside and you can't exactly like change it. You can't change that. That's not like a mutable factor. Whereas like, I mean, the way you label it can change. Your identity can change and how you feel about yourself your in, in a gender identity sense can change. But that's something you feel inside that you can't just, you know, stop. And gender expression obviously is how you express that identity on the, on, you know, outwardly. And for me, it's, you know, goth fashion. And I think it also comes, oh, sorry. No, uh, I think it also comes from a point where like, if you are like sometimes in terms of gender identity, if you have like, you know, a mismatch with, your body, your dysphoric about, you know, the way your body, your face, everything like that doesn't feel like it should fit. And you're going through that. It doesn't always have to mean that, yes, because of this reason, you are trans. Like being trans is like far more complex than just physical dysphoria. And like dysphoria is not even, like even, a, it's not even an illness. Like literally the best solution to that is let people just be themselves. Um, trans and gender diverse people, you know, be themselves. That's like the best solution to that. But um that sort of feeling that you know you don't fit into the sort of flesh bag that you're born in from a very you know it's a, it's, it's a very primal sense of okay there needs to be something to change and it's like it's a very desperate position for a lot of people because of that because i went through that for quite a while in my life but not as much as some other people might have done but it's still enough to make me want to say okay you know what i gotta come out i gotta change you know, so I'm medically transitioning and that made me feel happier because it's more of a euphoria as the gender that I was not assigned as at birth, whereas a dysphoria, like representing myself as the gender that I was assigned at birth. If that makes, yeah. It's kind of like where I stand on that. Yeah, right. So uh, thank you for sharing your uh, thoughts and feelings. Uh, it's appreciated. As a society, I mean, uh, photographic society is always an inclusive place and uh, we welcome uh, everybody uh, from, from the aesthetic point of view, as well as, uh, as, as, as people, uh, as people who, uh, everybody, as, as, as people who have value uh, on their own. Um, so uh, as, as, as we did this shoot, and I think uh, Sandeep will share some images um, I think uh, the way I looked at uh, you and uh, the output uh, through photographically and what uh, Sandeep looked at would uh, probably be different. So that's also a part of, how would I say, the mystery of your character. That's very true, Ramesh. So even in this presentation, if we look at the images that uh, you created out of this session and the images that I created out of it, there is a stark like difference that you can see visually they are different. The, the subject matter that we are capturing, even though it may be the same person, is different. So uh, this uh, presentation, it goes well with it because we are talking about accepting differences, uh, creating uh, equality, right? Um, so uh, I welcome everyone here to the presentation, Art Beyond Gender, um, presentation by Ramesh De Selva and Sandeep Dinlavala, uh, featuring Vasi. So uh, Vasi is uh, what, who you have been uh, listening to so far. Um, so let me uh, move into the presentation. Um, so we are going to uh, go through a bit of an introduction to who Wasi is, her art. I have captured some of her, the, her published work uh, and uh, then uh, talk about the two, uh, uh, the photo shoot that we did and the two sets of images that came out of the same shoot. So introduction, Wasi, maybe, uh, uh, you can um, tell a little bit about who you are, um, your uh, educational background, and a uh, little bit about you as a person. 
I know art is not something that can be separated from you, <laughs> but uh, you can touch upon who you are and then transition into uh, your artwork. Right. So I, it is true that art is not something I can just separate from myself, because as an artist, I am. I'm, I'm, th that's it. Like literally, my work is in <laughs> art, and like I also just put a lot of. We all put a lot of art on ourselves. So in a way, like we all create like images of ourselves for ourselves and the outside world, right? So I'm no different to that. It's just the fact that I think um I, I, th I think I just like to express myself like this with like a lot of heavy, you know, heavy makeup as well as you know, jewelry and just all of that because I feel like I am this person who is very out there, very loud and very flamboyant. And it's not only because I am trans that I kind of got there. It's because like, I always used to be like that and also very much felt invisible growing up. So I thought, you know what? My personality is very large and I like to be very stark and, you know, big, you know, lives and lives. So I kind of like got, you know, did all this and just, you know, I'm medically transitioning and I'm finally happy in any place I'm happy in my life so that's where some of the art also comes from like you know my poetry because I'm a spoken word poet um, and a lot of my poetry is written for trans and queer audiences because the fact that like I'm looking for people to connect with through my poetry as well as like share my own uh, experiences as a trans woman like my struggles with things like you know dysphoria um, language philosophy around being trans mental health uh, feelings about you know my body uh, various various things that like you know I just touch upon because I love uh, just you know I just love performing I love expressing and that's like something that I just like I said I just live in I just live in and like as a spoken word poet, I kind of combine a little bit of my writing and a little bit of theatricality into it because I was, you know, a theater actress. Um, I'm also a paleo artist and science communicator. So science communication is something I've done. Like I started doing seriously pretty recently, the same time when I started, you know, improving my visual art, like my drawings and paintings. So most of my income as an artist does come from paleo art, but also I love working on projects with you know real really great writers within the paleontology community as well as in the in like other place so this is actually like okay so these photos are from different people as well so there's two photos by my friends one photo of one of my friends by me does like an idea made just like from of a friend and I took it and the other one is just myself so <laughs> that I took myself uh, so yeah that's kind of who I am sometimes like you know I do I just like basically live in my art and I'm for and off my art as well because like even with paleontology I kind of like to take a very cross-disciplinary approach to that because that is something that is happening in the merging of like you know sciences and humanities and paleontology and you know that science has been like a really good place to go with it because again um, I am graduate like you know from Pedro University and I have studied English, classics, humanities, all of that. So going from there and joining a group called Paleontologists Against Systemic Racism and sort of carrying like a lot of discussions about that. Like I, I recently joined it, but then it's like a really great initiative to like you know stop systemic racism and uh, new like colonialist practices within like global south. Um, STEM fields as well as like you know allowing people of color and like queer identities to in these fields like come up and speak about you know their own uh, work and not have their credits like you know stolen or just you know any, any kind of just awful awful things that you know actually happen in STEM fields but we don't usually see because obviously it's like you know the scientific advances but then you don't see the more predatory side within these fields, even things like biology, oceanography, natural, like, you know, all these natural sciences, they do have, like, you know, a lot of just 
um, either very predatory like colonialist practices from like you know larger uh, you know much more like global north countries as well as um, simply no funding on the ground for uh, STEM uh, you know, researchers within the global south because like you know again local contributions as well as you know contribution of indigenous people in these communities might be forgotten or just you know ignored and that's also a really nice place to be in like a group like that so i kind of I actually i'm like very thankful to um this field to natural sciences because that's kind of how i met my first queer friends then they were abroad so it's like having trans you know companions um even though it was online that was instrumental to me even in coming out and accepting myself uh, which was you know two years ago so yeah um that's a little bit about myself in a very long-winded way and uh, i think a better look at me would be on my instagram because that's like a showcase of all my work that's very true Asi. so first encounter for me with you is also through instagram um and uh there's a lot of inspiration that I drew from some of your work and uh, wanted to incorporate some of that into uh, a shoot that we did very recently. So let's move to that and then we'll open up the forum uh, to any questions that they have or for a more detailed discussion if they have any other thoughts about it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know you like this image. <laughs> so I picked this one uh, to be the first image I want to show. Mm -hmm. uh, so now what's interesting about the set of images that I'm going to show in the next few slides is that the first set of it is taken by uh, me, the way I saw Vasi and the way I was feeling at that particular uh, shoot. And then we'll move on to another set of images of how Ramesh perceived Vasi and the images that he created in his mind and eventually transferred into a um, visual media that he, you can all see. Um, and then we'll talk oh, a little and, uh, bit Ramesh about- Ramesh has yet to send- <laughs> Oh, sorry, I was gonna say that Ramesh has yet to send me uh, the images that he took. Uh, yeah, so Vasi yeah. has also not seen this yet, <laughs> Ramesh. Yeah, what happened was he was I had a bit of a mishap. Uh, I had a problem with the computer. I lost all the images. So I was left only with the black and whites. Yeah. So uh, that was a problem. So I've sort of got somewhere with some images for the uh, presentation. But yeah, right. uh, I'll send you some later. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Sorry about the interruption. No, 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 no. no it's not at all. Um, so I called this uh, emotions in motion. Um, so when we uh, started uh, the shoot, uh, this was in uh, the fringe, Ramesh's uh, studio. And uh, so initially, I when I was uh, telling Wasi what we wanted out of the shoot, um, the words that I used, if you uh, recall, Vasi, were that I want you to feel this. I want you to feel yeah. that. I want you to yeah. feel like uh, things are crushing you. So um, my, when my words were coming out of my mouth, Vasi was already going into his <laughs> or her, her, uh, yeah, her. her, sorry, sorry, her, her uh, um, thought process. Words. Um, I could see her already transforming in front of me. And uh, after that point, we had to do very little direction. We just let her flow free and uh, she kept on uh, moving from one mood to another, uh, trying to tell a story, maybe uh, a series of emotions. But um, so we, we both were the spectators and we captured them in very different ways. So this is how I saw uh, her moving through the emotions. Uh, and uh, I captured a few images uh, to share here today. So these are uh, at the early part of the shoot where uh, she was uh, moving all over the place, feeling free. 
um, using both her facial expressions as well as uh, body to uh, express certain feelings, uh, deep emotions. <laughs> and uh, things got really intense at one point. And uh, she was in character. She was not breaking character. Even when we were trying to give her directions like move this side, move, move this way a little bit so that the lighting should be right uh, on her. She was not breaking her character. She was even moving with still emotions and making the moves. And it was very interesting to see. So all these expressions that you see are not really directed expressions, but uh, her expressing her own uh, uh, inner self of the emotions that he created for the shoot prop. This is where we think got really interesting. Uh, <laughs> we wanted to uh, try something creative, uh, create uh, an image uh or, or, or an image with two expressions one person in motion um hence the name emotions in motion uh the reason why i use that name also um so uh, this is all in camera these are these are not uh, post-processed uh, to create uh, double exposures this is an in camera uh with a slow shutter um while Vasi was uh, moving from one uh, pose to another, giving different expressions. So with that, uh, oh, I, oh <laughs> so I will uh, ask uh, Ramesh to share his thoughts as we go through the next set of images. Now, he did not name this uh, series. Um, for me, when I was looking at uh, the images that I had captured and then uh, to see Ramesh's images, the thing, first thing that came into my mind is this is like in another parallel universe. We were both shooting the same scene in the same studio with same lighting. And what we both created is completely different. So very interesting. Uh, it was a learning experience for me as well. So uh, Ramesh, uh, you can uh, share your thoughts, please. Yeah, OK. I mean, just roll the images. I'm, I'm not sure. As I said, uh, I was trying to find, I mean, who this person was, and it's, oh it's still God. a mystery. And uh, I wanted to bring that element of that shroud. You know, we are looking through a shroud and, and trying to find uh, who is looking through, who's looking back. Uh -huh. uh, that's kind that. of. <laughs> The idea right. is that that's kind of a theme in a lot of my poems as well, like the gaze yeah. and, sub, and also subverting gaze. In this case, it's like the construct, the concept of the male gaze on queer bodies and, and on mm -hmm. women, queer women, trans women. Yeah. So that's kind of like a theme in my poetry about the right. gaze and about returning it and, or subverting it. And, you know, that's actually a thing that yeah. I know. Yeah, I wanted to leave more questions than answers when somebody sees these images. So I'm not sure how how successful I am. I mean, I just leave it you know, to the people to see and get back, right? But uh, it looks cool. Oh my god! Yeah, you're like waiting to explore, isn't it? You need to conquer the world. <laughs> so I tried to keep an element, uh, identifying element. You know, I think uh, your necklace is one of your uh, uh, anchor points for your personality, isn't it? It is actually, since I love necklaces and I like very alternative sort of fashions, mm. like goth fashions and stuff, I kind of like, the, like, you know, this kind of imagery as well, including pentagrams. Yeah. 
so this was very enlightening for me as well to see a whole different uh, perspective <laughs> uh, it's, it's yeah. just mind blowing i thought yeah that uh, i sent you one later i think you wouldn't have missed and it's okay I'm something a little different <laughs> uh, i emailed it sorry i got a little late on that anyway let me see if i can find that yeah just see i mean it's a little different yeah so uh, as i said vasi uh, you uh, i think uh, trying to sort of uh, portray you uh, the way i would look at it is that uh, there's no way that you can capture the person off you know there is no way because you can't it's it's, it's complex uh, there are so many things that are going inside you right uh, when i when we see your art your line drawing your uh, that is like the stone age art no it is called filler filler paleo art it's paleo yeah, paleo art. is like, uh, it's uh, it's like line drawing like the prehistoric thing no um it's not only line drawings it's also like actual painted work also I actually have some paintings that i can right. Right. I'll show you now in my sketch book. If you give me a minute. Uh... Is this the image you wanted to show, Ramesh? Uh, See, well... I am uh, by practice a paleo artist, surrealist, fantasy artist, and also I do some contemporary artwork. So my contemporary right. work is a lot more diverse. Right. It incorporates like, a lot more things, but like this is right. my. But my paleo art looks. So I'm also a painter. So painter oh. drafts women, you know, I draw, I use pens, and like multidisciplinary in terms of my work and my work. Right. Yeah. So. Oh, that's so that's what I thought. Like as much as you're so expressive, there's such a lot of things that are sort of contained within you. So that mm. you know, you know uh, is 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 a mystery. So that's what I really want to show from the photographs that I want. Uh, like this. Yeah. You do send them to me. I really love them. I sure, sure, sure. did not expect that and I love it. Yeah, sure, I'll do that. Yeah, so uh, I'm sure there'll be other uh, other members who want to ask uh, Vasi uh, about uh, her work or her interest. How so many this... people are inside? <laughs> That's what I thought. There's a painter, <laughs> there is somebody who's transiting, there is uh, a mystery person, who, et cetera, et cetera, poet. <laughs> it's intriguing, isn't it? Right. So um, it reminds me of like spirit photography. <laughs> so um, now this session today that we are right now in is going to get tied into another session that we are planning from the portrait and glamour group uh, in the next few weeks, the first week of March. Um, we are planning to uh, do a um, monochrome uh, shoot in a studio with creative light setups, something different. Um, so now uh, for this session, uh, uh, you have another uh, element that will bring a lot of difference and uh, value to your shoot should be Vasi. Vasi would be uh, our model for that day. So that would be an opportunity and an interesting uh, chance for people to explore uh, the emotions that we saw we, we only scratched the surface of it um, the amount of artwork that he has published is insane so <laughs> i was consuming them one after another uh, uh, before getting in touch with her and uh, it's amazing oh and uh, someone asked me 
what inspires my work so to imran since you're the one who asked me okay uh, what inspires my work is hmm? yeah yeah imran so what inspires my work is basically i was always expressive that's just it i was always expressive and always like connected to art and expression like one foot in that but i didn't always get the chance to express myself growing up which is why i am now sort of playing a little bit of catch up uh for things that i didn't do and didn't say and couldn't be and didn't be when i was growing up so i think that also inspires my work like not only my feelings and emotions and my connections to natural world as well as to like um society my body everything that i'm going through and like someone else might be going through and like you know come from like wider society my my connection to my me my identity and society like all of that inspires me to do various kinds of work sometimes my trauma also sort of inspires me as a theater actress so it's been and 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 the poet so all of that kind of adds up and kind of everything's kind of interconnected in in a sense so it's kind of interconnected because sometimes emotions want to come out as a poem sometimes the emotions want to come out as like an extinct fish hey into the extinct fish so it depends on what you want to do yeah uh, i i think uh, we see a very nice comment by sama uh, she's uh, yeah i mean surely i mean the society uh, is is built on uh, you know uh on a, on a, on a, on a being a meeting ground for everybody to express and uh, you know um be their own self uh, show their individuality and i think that is what that is what has helped us to survive for a long time and uh, at a time when everything is so divis divis divisive isn't it i mean everything looks to be within a sort of a group or um uh type or ethnic uh, 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 identity or a country or a flag or a political ideology i think uh, at least in 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 our little way we need to sort of find a harmonizing uh, harmonizing factor and i think photography uh, is a great medium uh, to connect with also, um also leila alas asked what's the connection of paleo art to your experience so good question because like paleo art and my experiences now the funny thing is i feel like i use extinct animals like fish dinosaurs um you know a lot of like you know extinct reptiles and invertebrates and stuff as a proxy to use for my for some of the emotions that i have and sometimes i don't even know what each artwork means in a sense all i know is that i want to make something because i feel like i can and i feel like i want to communicate something so it's science communication as well as adding a little bit of like you know an emotional element to it a little bit of motion i feel like sometimes what comes out of me is a wild side of me that kind of loves the sort of power of like you know the seas undescribed things in like water and the power of water and like the power of like you know you don't always know what's out there right so it's like sort of again i feel like that does i do tap into like a wild but also very unknown part of myself through paleo art as well and that's what i want to communicate with that Um, uh, uh, the basi if i may actually just uh, uh, this is laya here just yeah your, hi. your your answer um do you feel that uh, your experience is a, is an undisclosed unknown element is that what you're trying to do um, i mean because paleo um, artistry is uh, the is is basically as i understand artistry relating to geological past yeah yeah it is it is so what 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 do you try to depict i mean do you feel that you you are an unknown quantity in some way um i think all of us do have a little bit of of something that we don't share or there's something a little bit you know that we have don't know how to always express right so like a lot of the more overt expression of self comes through my performance work my poetry work my writing it's very honest it's very very honest and very big and very blunt it's very out there 
in terms of like you know how i presented but then the paleo artwork kind of it feels a little different to me because i know there's an emotion attached i know there's an excitement and a mystery attached to it which i think and that's why I also enjoy it because like I know there's an emotional connection there and I know that I'm trying to like express it in the way that I am able to like you know it's sort of it's not even a mirror opposite to my usual work but it's also there's a bit of it there though there is a bit of it there in there somewhere and I still can connect to an extinct animal emotionally in a way or any animal emotionally i don't know how that happens but it does uh, so i don't know i feel like i i hope i answered that because it's a very mysterious kind of connection for me too that even i'm trying to figure out the more i keep working in that tradition i think uh we'll see uh the way i see it is uh, you know we all have little dark corners not dark corners corners in our personality which we sort of express in different ways. Uh, I mean, not bad things, right? But different things, in, you know? So maybe uh, the, there are things that you, you want to express uh, or connect and uh, bring out uh, and uh, your personality and, uh, you know, your life. Uh, and uh, the modus or the methods that you're using is your art, your poetry, and so on and so forth. And if you look at your art, I mean, um, it is mysterious, isn't it? The lines and all that. It it is it is it is so sort of how would I say uh, uh, forceful, uh, forceful but mysterious. Uh, it could mean different things to different people. So maybe that's who you are. So maybe many because I do use. I mean, I do use a lot of heavy shadows in my work and very contrasting stuff light and shadow and like very stark color palettes as well when I paint so it actually it does sound like a fitting read read of my work in a sense and uh, okay well has art helped you overcome yes it has helped me overcome honestly so much more than I can think of because if I have an awful experience for example like I was a theater actress for about like seven or eight years when I was in school and in university and I still take up acting work whenever I get the chance. Like recently I was in an independent film last year and like another you know, small film project um, like last month. So I kind of do some acting stuff uh, than that. So like um, art has helped me because like I said, if I have something bad happen to me, it's less like a traumatic incident or many traumatic incidents, I can just draw on that. And in a way it's kind of like coming to a place where it doesn't hurt you as much as it used to, but you can use it. You can harness it, rein it in and use it. So I might use it in, you know, make in like, you know, a spoken word poem or, you know, creating character on stage. So it kind of works in a very roundabout way, uh, sadly, in the sense that, yes, I went through this, but then I come to a place where I have power over it if I can like use it to express it and express it very openly and very boldly, Sama. And uh, that's what that part of my art has like helped me with. Um, that's that's an excellent way of combating <laughs> in a manner. If I'm to use the word combating, the pain that sometimes the society can give you, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It really, it really is like my. Poetry is basically sort of like a, like a public diary of myself and my experiences, which is how it's become. Excellent. If I may go back to the, uh, the, the photographic aspects of it, I'll probably ask the questions first from Ramesh, I guess. Um, um, when you, in your photographs, did you try to bring her, um, inner self, if you like, uh, it, through your photographs or what did you do? I mean, there's one or two actually you, have, I don't know whether it's deliberately or not, kept it out of focus. I think that's especially the one about that her jewelry. Yeah. It's, it's a very much out of focus. Now, what did you want now that this photograph, what, what did you want to bring out of that? Laya, honestly, I don't know. 
right? Uh, that would be my first reaction to the question. Uh, it, yeah, so let me ask Vasi the question. When, when you yeah. see that, what, what do you see? You as, um, a, as a poet, an artist? What do I see is, it honestly doesn't really matter because sometimes I just want to enjoy, th enjoy things and just feel something, right? I don't always want to put like a word on what I feel. I just want like the experience of it. I, I, I think uh, Laya is just a starting point. This, this picture is just a starting point. I think it's not an end statement of uh, what I want to show. So as I said, uh, if I could sort of uh, spark or ignite a journey for somebody, uh, you ask a good question. What am I showing through this picture? Yes, I said, I don't know, honestly, right? So that's a good start. Right for me to think about, or you to think about, or for anybody who looks at this image to think about. All what I want to do here is to anchor it to Wasi uh, by uh, showing her necklace. Otherwise, I thought you know it'll be like a ship uh, without anchor; it'll just lost in the ocean. So I've just anchored it there, and then. Um, <clears throat> Rest is up to the person who sees it, I guess. Yeah, I guess that actually so, does so, work because my first reaction to it is, wow, that is so cool. <laughs> it was like the first reaction. I think, Ala, uh, there's a bit of an impulse uh, behind the um, click of the shutter to, throughout that shoot. So I was not planning to take like I'm this is the shot that I'm gonna take yeah I'm, I'm, I'm sure <laughs> uh, uh, Wasi had no idea these are the emotions that she would be <laughs> giving us during that no, show. Uh, no because seeing... <laughs> like what actually happened oh sorry Sandeep you go on seeing the way Ramesh was reacting also I'm sure he was also caught off guard and that's what we were capturing the fact that we were caught off guard and uh, this, like Ramesh said, this the starting point for somebody to think and uh, feed as an inspiration for a shoot that we can actually plan and do in the future. Um, just a thought that I wanted to share. Yeah, yeah, Vasi, you were saying something? Yeah, so what I realized was that at the end of the day, I, since I was sort of, I was basically acting through it, like basically channeling some emotions and performing through it. So it kind of became like a performance even for me. So it's like a mute performance art piece of sorts, even though it wasn't very, very well choreographed from my point of view, because I was sort of going to through very, you know, very, very, very like, you know, the directions obviously were like, okay, feel this, but then like I had to, you know, sort of feel whatever, like when the camera is there. So it's kind of easy because I'm there with something uh, like backing me and these lights. So in that moment, it's easy for me to feel like, okay, I'm sort of exploring and suddenly being cornered. Like it's very, it's a very easy direction uh, to follow in that sense. So it kind of became like a mute performance from my body and from my face and emotions in that, in that moment. And again, mute and completely improvised too, save for these few pointers. Like a basic direction, like even for a film or a theater production, we'd be like, okay, be afraid. And then you're kind of free to interpret that. Of course, you can like break that direction down and sort of direct the movement of the performer. But then if you want like a very raw sort of take, I guess you can just go with like a big, a bigger expression. And since I'm I'm used to theater acting, so it's like that's a big expression like for a huge audience. So this is like kind of like that, kind of like had that feeling without too much specificity, which is a good thing for me. Like so, so, so Wasi, what you are saying is, is this your actor or actress, as the case may be, that is coming out, in which case. Could any actress or actor be, uh, be able to give those emotions that Sandeep was looking to capture? Um, uh, what, which, which part of us, I mean, I certainly cannot do that because I'm not an actor. I don't think I can actually bring out emotions the way you have brought it. But I like to come to Sandeep's uh, photography later on. 
but uh, in answer to your question, is this, is this the actor that is coming out or actress that is coming out? Is it something else within you that is coming out? I feel like it's a mix of all of those because my acting training was certainly helping me. So I don't know which of those direct, like, you know, pinpoints. I, I don't bullet point this stuff. So it's like my acting training was helping me, but I don't know what exactly was coming out. It's more so some of them, it was like, you know, a little bit of imagination going into that because you kind of need to have your brain and, and feelings open at the same time to sort of go through like, you know, the, through the motions and go through the emotions. So it's like a mix, it's like kind of a combination of everything. Because even normally I'm kind of an expressive person. Like if you'd see me, like I'm chill, but I also be like, you know, expressive. So uh, makeup, actually makeup, yes. I do use a lot of makeup. I almost always use a lot of makeup. So I didn't think that I would, need makeup on the desk that came bare face. But at the end of the day, yeah, I did need my makeup. So I just did like my daily makeup and like maybe a little artsy, maybe a little raw, little anti-glam as it were. If I may go back to Sandeep on this uh, technical stuff on the photography, uh, yes, you were actually capturing the, the, uh, the, 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 the slow exposure stuff. Um, do this one and even the previous one is even even better. This one. Now, did uh, did Vasi have to do something very specific for this? For did she know that you were doing extra slow exposure, or how did you actually get it? This is fantastic from within the camera. <laughs> so uh, one thing we did was uh, we took a few without telling her first. She was just going through the motions, posing because she was not stopping. Even when we were not doing these uh, motion captures, she was not stopping and waiting for us to capture. When she was feeling something, she was going there. <laughs> and we, we were kind of following and uh, trying to capture it. Um, when I say she's going there, not like she's still in the same studio space, it's just that her expressions and motion and everything just moves, keeps on moving according to what she was going through emotionally at that point in time is what we saw and uh, we showed her the couple of these and said this is what we want to do for the next part of the shoot so in order to do that these are the changes that we are going to do so when when she poses what we told her was uh, now the moment the strobes flash she has to make motions fast make fast moves. So uh, this did not come out in one shot. It had to be tried out in different, different poses. Uh, we tried with a one second uh, exposure and that became too much. That, be, that, that basically turned her into a complete blur. Then uh, I came to, <laughs> uh, I came to then uh, one uh, quarter uh, one eighth of a second that was too fast it was not capturing the motion enough and Ramesh was pointing out that we needed more ambient light to uh, capture this motion after the strobe uh, uh, fires so finally we rested on a place where we were feeling comfortable knowing that this would uh, give us the exposure we wanted so uh, I can I have a, a photograph that I can share um, this is uh, one second exposure and so, how so these are all strobed photographs right sir? all strobed photographs so if i show this photograph now this is a one second exposure and uh, <laughs> so basically <laughs> uh, <laughs> so there's very little of uh, her shape or uh, expression there. So I had to dial it down a little bit uh, to uh, half a second uh, or a quarter of a second and then uh, things started uh, falling into place. Very nice, actually, really, really nice. But one thing, one thing for sure, you are a super actress. You bring out the <laughs> nice uh, emotions. Thank you, thank you.
just just doing what I what I'm used to, just doing what I love, that and having a little bit of fun with it too. Because some some place I did like you know, um, I, I was like you know having like having like a lot of fun, sort of being expressive and just doing just the weirdest poses out there, but also maintaining my seriousness. It's kind of like you're playing it straight, even though you know that the pose you're doing is very out of left field. At least that was how some of them went. Whereas others, it was more, you know, actually playing it far more seriously and like going a lot more like, you know, imagining things like, you know, weight, weight crushing you, things like that. Let me ask something very controversial. Has gender got anything to do with photography? Gender and photography, I feel like the, it does have a lot of way to do, like a lot to do with uh, photography, especially how certain demographics and certain groups are depicted through, to, through photography. So I'd say, yes, it, I feel like it always has been the connection. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And I mean, here it's, I mean, in this year, it's more so about my emotions and expressions. And the fact that I'm an actress. So I feel like my gender, as in my I, my expression comes out, but then in terms of identity, uh, I don't know, does it, does the fact that I'm trans come out? I don't know, actually it's more like I have, I am trans, but also that's not the first thing you learn about me anyway. You just learn that I'm wild and out of left field in this show. That's the, that's the idea that I get. I think, also, yeah. and I think it gives you the strength to liberate yourself, I think, uh, because uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the conventional person like a male or a female would, uh, would want to probably live and exist within the accepted norms. And then we are so pulled back uh, by this uh, thing called acceptance. Uh, is it acceptable? Is it okay? Is it, uh, you know, uh, is it, uh, would it affect my, you know, standing uh, and so on? Um, but then I think uh, when you break those barriers and you come out, uh, you, you just uh, probably explode. I mean, uh, <clears throat> I could, uh, the, just, the, just yesterday I was watching this movie. It's, it's just a parallel, right? Uh, but on Freddie Mercury, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, and the amount of talent that that man put out was amazing and I think uh, it all happened when he sort of discovered himself and that was the basis so I think uh, in a manner to answer last question also the connection photography or expressionism or whatever painting or poetry I think uh, it's that liberating uh, the inner liberation that uh, you know you, you, you create uh, when you break all these bonds and you just want to be yourself but isn't that what we all do, uh, Ramesh, actually? I mean, in one way or the other, I mean, well, I mean, I, 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 I don't gender. agree with you. No, I, I don't know, Laya, because, you know, we are always so confined. No, I mean, don't you think that there's a little strings pulling you back? Like, uh, I mean, just, just for argument's sake, uh, do you think like you'll go into a wedding, uh, I mean, in your shorts or something like that uh, with a wig? No, I, I mean, think those are respectable. I mean, I mean that's like how the no. politics of respectability work, right? I mean, a yeah. certain certain group, a certain demographic will be like, okay, you have to be respectable if you follow this, 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 you know, this little arbitrary bullet points basically to go off the wedding thing and to make it a little bit broader. So that's like a class, like a class thing. Yeah. So yeah, respectability is also one of those strings, isn't it? It's such a you know, like a uh, unseen, uh, implicit thing, which uh, would probably contain you. So, so that's what I'm saying. I suppose you come out. I mean, then you, you know, you you just be yourself, and you don't care. I suppose, right? You just. And I well, I mean, the way I look at it, the reason why I put that uh, uh, the question uh, kind of uh, hypothetically is that I think when you, I mean, you take your example, go into a wedding in shorts. I think it's respectability is more for respecting the other's opinion rather than your own, uh, you know, bringing out your own self. Yeah. Whereas uh, in photography, music, uh, art, 
uh, we are kind of liberating ourselves and actually bringing out things uh, without having to worry about what the others think. That, I mean, was he has actually come. So the actors actually, actors and actresses actually has that uh, visa, if you like, to do things that you like and nobody would actually say anything about it because that's what they do. Whereas you and I, Romesh, yeah. we, probably, we are not actors. The make believe. So we don't have that freedom. Yeah, I guess they say, ah, uh, you just cross the street and everything is fine, and then the credits go. So that's how a movie ends. But mm -hmm. in real life, you cross the street and life goes on. Nothing ends, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so from your own personal life, Vasi, I mean, the fact that you are doing what you are doing, um, from a from a satisfaction point of view, you as a person, right? Yeah. How does that affect you? I mean, basically, you are, you are a pale you artist, you are an act, actress. Um, you're probably not a photographer yet, I guess. Um, no, oh, I no, don't know. Not, not. So <laughs> how does that affect you personally? Your satisfaction? Um, it's great. It's basically I'm doing what I always wanted to do, like delve myself into art and creativity. So... I have no regrets, just that I want to do what I do, but expand my horizons and get better at it. Hmm. Yeah. It's a very interesting conversation. <laughs> um, so, uh, we are almost uh, reaching the end of our conversation or the time allocated for us. Uh, <clears throat> before we wind down, uh, just a reminder uh, for uh, everyone who's on this uh, call uh, at this point, as well as uh, uh, we will be sharing a notice uh, to the group members of the portrait group uh, and uh, our in our members forum as well. Uh, an open invitation uh, to take part in uh, the session that we are planning in the first week of uh, March um, and uh, explore your own creativity. So, so your model will help you by bringing so much emotion and uh, uh, motion and story into your shoot. So you can not worry about it as a photographer and focus on what you wanted to capture and what you see in front of you that you want to uh, uh, show others. So um, with that open invitation, Ramesh, uh, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, and Vasi, thank you so much for joining us and uh, sharing your thoughts with us. And uh, for everyone who took part in today's session, uh, we have Hiran on the call, Satya, Naomi, Imran, uh, and uh, I saw Sama earlier, Tharaka. So thank you all. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll meet again on the, so our next uh, monthly meeting will be on uh, uh, 8th of March. So uh, by that time, we would have finished our uh, planned uh, shoot with Ramesh. So thanks again. Thank you so much. Uh, have a good evening. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you. you for all three of you, actually. Very nice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Thank you for having me, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you, Masi. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.